Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I speed paint my cavalry units for my various historical armies using an airbrush. I've heard a lot of people complain about painting horses because they often take forever to paint. There's a lot of territory, a lot of exposed skin you have to paint. There's a lot of flat surfaces. It can take forever to paint with a brush getting, you know, nice subtle blends. But with an airbrush, you can crank these guys out in only a few minutes and get pretty decent results. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prime our horse black as I plan on this horse being this dark brown chestnut color. And having this nice black foundation will make the low lights more kind of dynamic as we're layering on our brown colors. Now, of course, if you're painting a white or gray horse, I would suggest you use gray as your foundation, as your primer. But all the techniques that I'll be using for this film can work for various kinds of horses. All we're going to do is put down three different colors. We're going to put down a dark low light, and then we're going to zenithal at about a 45 degree, degree angle with a lighter brown color, and then we're going to shoot almost directly down at a 90 degree angle, only at the top surfaces of the horse with a very light brown, your typical zenithal highlight. And that'll basically be it. Our horse will almost be finished, which is why I really recommend getting an airbrush. I know it's kind of a steep investment at first. It's a few hundred bucks that you have to drop. But really for this hobby, I feel like time is our enemy, not so much the money involved. You'll get to a point where you'll have hundreds of miniatures and not enough time to paint them. But with an airbrush, you can prime them quickly. You can use Zenithal or other airbrushing techniques or just paint them outright with your airbrush and save hours and hours of time that you'll be able to use playing the game rather than, you know, painting. So now that our miniature is primed, we're gonna put our first layer color down. So here I'm using the German Extra Black Brown, I believe it's the name of it, by Vallejo, and I'm completely covering all of the model with this, and it kind of blends in well with the black, so even if you don't get perfect coverage, you really can't tell, it's just this nice, dark brown accented horse for our shade layer so we'll go ahead completely cover him with that color and then once that layer has dried we're going to come at it at about a 45 degree angle with some leather brown by Vallejo and I'm just going to barely rock the trigger and I, I want to hit kind of the uh, the top portions of his back his haunches uh, his kind of knees that are jutting out the top of his head while still maintaining those low lights in the kind of the crevices of his muscles and on the undersides of his legs and things like that. So just have to hold it at a at about a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit steeper, and you'll get these nice highlights. And if you're really doing a rush job, that could be it. You could just call it a day right here. You have a pretty subtle uh, transition from highlights to lowlights. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time. You know, we'll we'll take an, another minute or two to get some really high highlights on there and get some more drastic transitions between the colors. But that's the great thing about an airbrush. Blending comes so easy with this. Comes so easy once you learn how to how to maintain it, keep it from getting clogged. You kind of learn the ins and outs of your airbrush. It is a tool that is hard to live without. So now for my final highlight, I'm going to take Beastie Brown by Vallejo, which is kind of this nice reddish brown color. I'm going to spray it at almost a 90 degree angle, almost straight down on the miniature. Don't drop it, that's not good. Uh, but I'm going to spray right down on it, hitting only the really top of its back, the, its, its head, and maybe those knees jutting out. I'm going to select the places that are hit, just so that we get a really nice pop in contrast between the browns. You don't want to be too overzealous with this color, or you'll spray over all the nice transitions we, we've been making over the last few steps. But that's it! Five minutes in, and you've painted the flesh of the horse, which is always the thing that takes the longest. All the straps and his hair, those things are always quick. It's making these subtle highlights and lowlights on the flesh that can take hours and hours. But with an airbrush, you can speed paint it and still get a nice result. I used to, when I was speed painting these things with a brush, I just kind of quickly throw on three highlights you can still see the brush strokes all over it it looked kind of like a sloppy job especially if you examined it up close this way it can kind of it, your horse will look good up close or from three feet away you'll you'll get to see highlights and lowlights and also nice transitions so now I'm going to speed up as I do all the other stuff, which will actually take more time than painting the majority of the horse. Uh, but another optional step is I'm going to just hit the 
the areas that I think will be in deepest shadow with a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I'm hitting that around the muscles and around those leather straps underneath the legs just to give it some more contrast. Oftentimes, airbrush does too good of a blending job and so when you're standing back from the table a few feet away your your figures can sometimes look a little monochromatic the the shades are that smooth so by by hitting them with a watch just gives them a little extra pop when you're when you're staring at them from a few feet away again optional if you want to call it done you can call it done after only five minutes but we're going to go the extra mile for our, our uh, speed painting Another optional step is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a black ink and hit the haunches and the hooves of the horse. So oftentimes you see these dark brown horses with a, kind of a black sections of their lower legs and also their mane and tail often are almost jet black. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, optional. You don't have to do this. You can just leave it that brown color and it would look absolutely fine. All right, but again, we're, we'll, we'll go the extra mile, why not? We saved all that time painting the skin with the airbrush. We can spend a few minutes just doing this. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint all the straps on this horse, and since this is meant for a Saxon nobleman, I am going to paint white leather on there to make him kind of stand out from the, uh, the fodder, the, the peasants that he'll be fighting with. I often like to paint my officers with white leather. Something about it seems nice and pretentious. So we'll just go around and, and we're not gonna spend much time on these leather straps at all. We're just gonna give them a once over highlight and call it a day. Cause really no one's gonna be spending much time looking at these small little leather straps. So for that highlight, I'm just taking a little bit of ivory. This was a, I think it's a shale gray. It's a very light gray by Vallejo. And I'm highlighting it here with that ivory, just hitting the tops of the straps. I'm only gonna do one highlight, call it a day, because again, no one spends any time looking at these. That's kind of the trick to speed painting. Know what's gonna catch people's eye, know what's not, and don't spend much time on those pieces that really um, no one's gonna even notice, and that's like leather straps. All right, so there we go. We, we got our leather straps highlighted. And so now we can go ahead and move on to highlighting the the hair on the horse. So I'm using this dark gray. Uh, I believe it's just neutral gray by Vallejo. Then I mix some of that black ink in there. And I'm over brushing. I'm not dry brushing here. So I, I loaded up my brush. I'm just moving the side of my brush against the hair. Not worrying about being too careful here because I'm going to go back over it with a black with that black ink to tone down the gray. I, I, you want really subtle highlights with black or else you'll, you'll just get a gray looking color. Um, so doing the same thing with his mane, just hitting, the, hitting it with the side of my brush. And then I'm also taking that gray and I'm going to be hitting the, his, uh, his haunches and his, uh, his hooves here. Um, doing just a quick job here because again, I'll take the ink, go over these sections to help blend them in. So just a nice quick job just areas that I think might catch a little bit of light. And so now we're going in with that black ink and just giving it a, a thorough coating, toning down the grays, giving a nice subtle blend with our, our black sections on the horse. And that's it, that's it. It probably took me 20 minutes to paint this horse. I used to spend hours and I don't think I'll ever go back to that, at least not for these kind of mass historical cal cavalry units. I like to spend a little bit more time on my smaller model count games like Warhammer, but if you're painting hundreds of these things, go quick, go quick. So here is my finished Saxon Noble all based and painted. And I think the horse turned out rather well for only taking about 20 minutes. And at least for myself, I think it justified me spending a little bit more time on the rider. I spent maybe half an hour to an hour longer than I normally would, knowing I saved all that time painting the horse. So hopefully this inspired you to get your airbrush out, paint up some of those cavalry you have laying around, or perhaps maybe inspired you to go out and buy an airbrush. I cannot possibly recommend an airbrush anymore. It is a necessity for me. I use my airbrush on nearly every project I do, whether it is uh, miniatures or terrain. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you soon with another video.